The title of my sermon today is Watch and Pray. Watch and Pray. Before the arrest of Jesus Christ, he went um, out to pray with his disciples and at the point he came out and he saw them sleeping the first time. He went again to pray, came back and he saw them sleeping. So he, he said to them, he encouraged them to watch and pray. And let's see that from the book of Matthew 26, 14. Matthew 26, 41. I'll read from 38 so we we'll, we'll get the whole thing from 38 then said he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou will and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto the Peter, What? Could you not watch with me only one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus Christ told them to watch and pray so that they will not enter into temptation. And remember, Jesus Christ was going through a lot because it was close to the time um, they would arrest him and crucify him. So he was going through, he, 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 he didn't have peace because um, James was talking about peace. Jesus Christ was so sorrowful and he was praying to God that if it were possible, let this cup pass over him. And here he encouraged them to watch and pray. So if we really want to have peace that surpasses all understanding, I think we have to heed to this instruction that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples. He said to them, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And the question is, what are we watching? And how are we going to watch? What are we watching? You know, we have various forms of temptation. We have temptation from within and we have temptation from without. So Jesus Christ said to them, watch and pray. And for us today, I think it's important for us to also watch and pray, but we have to start watching from ourselves. We have to start watching ourselves so that we will not fall into the temptation from within, the temptation that we cause for ourselves. We will not just walk into temptation. That is very important. We have to watch and pray so that we will not enter into temptation from within us, from our own thoughts, from our own conversations, from our own relationships. Temptations that we cause by our own selves, that we attracted to our own selves. That is very important. Look at what Proverbs twenty, Proverbs six twenty eight says. Proverbs, Proverbs six twenty eight. Proverbs six twenty eight. Proverbs 6, 28, can one go upon a hot coal and his feet not burn? So if we generate our own temptation and trial, then we will fall into it. We will surely fall into it and we will start having crisis. And if you turn to Matthew 7, 20, Matthew 7, 20.
Matthew 7, 20 to 23. Jesus Christ said, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Um, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark. Mark 7. Not Matthew, Mark. Mark 7, 20. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, men proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defiles a man. So we have to watch ourselves. We have to watch our current way. Where are we heading to? Is it going to lead us into temptation? We have to watch the people that surround us currently. Are they people that will lead us into temptation? We have to watch the conversations we have currently. Are they conversations that are capable of leading us into temptation? Our current path, is it a path that leads to temptation and trials? We have to watch our own selves. We have to watch. If we watch, if we watch ourselves, if we are able to subdue the flesh when it have evil thoughts, generates evil thoughts and all these things, we will not enter into temptation. It's very important that we start the watch from within. That is very important. Mark 7, 20 to 23 says it all. All these things can defile a man. They don't come from without. They don't come from outside. They come from inside of us. And if you turn to the book of James 1, James 1, James 1, 13 to 14. James 1, 13 to 14. And he said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then lust hath conceived, he brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So we have to watch ourselves, even as Passover draws near, we have to watch our thoughts, what we think. We have to watch the conversations we have. We have to watch where we are heading to currently. We have to, you know, stop if that part will lead us to temptation and trial. If you turn to Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, 12. says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death so we have to examine ourselves always we have to look inwardly and examine ourselves and if we are able to identify things that will lead us into temptation that comes from within us and we are able to stop them through prayers and our own actions, then we will be able to have peace that surpasses all understanding. 
we'll be able to have that peace that Mr. James was talking about. If we avoid temptations and trials, if we don't jump into them by ourselves, then we will have peace. We will have the peace of God. But we must, we must watch and pray. And the watch has to start from us. We have to watch how we talk to other people. We have to watch how we treat other people. We have to watch our conversation with other people. We have to watch ourselves. We have to watch our tongues, our body language, our relationships, our communications. We have to watch those things very closely so that we will not jump into temptation by our own selves. Proverbs 4.22 Proverbs 4 Proverbs 4 I'll start from 23 Proverbs 4, 23 to 27 Say, so keep your heart with all diligence For out of it are the issues of life Put away from thee a forward mouth And perverse lips put far from thee Let your eyes look right on And let your eyelids look straight before thee Wonder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. So he's telling us to guard our heart with all diligence. Because a lot of things come from our heart. Both the power to build and the power to destroy comes from our heart. We have to guard it with all diligence and we have to ponder the part of our feet and we have to make sure we are walking on the right path so this is the first thing we have to watch we have to watch ourselves so that we will not enter into temptation from within us then we have to watch ourselves we have to watch as well for temptations from without, temptation that comes from other sources that don't originate from us. If you turn to Genesis 3 1, Genesis 3 1. Genesis 3 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said you shall not eat of the tree, of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Yea, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So this one, the, 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 the tempter came to her to tempt her. So we must watch out. We must look out for people that come to us. People that come to us. People that visit us. People that are always around us. And they, they are making a lot of suggestions to us. They are telling us what to do. They are suggesting to us how to live our life what we should do what we should not do where we made mistake and where we, we, sh we should have corrected it we have to be on the look we have to watch out for people like this like the serpent that came to the woman just to destroy the woman and her generation so we have to watch and if you turn to the book of john chapter 10 john 10 John 10, 10. John 10, 10. The book of John 10, 10. Says, The thief cometh not, 
but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. So we have to stay awake. We have to watch when the thief will come. But the thief only comes to destroy and to steal. And not all thieves come with gun, come armed. Some have ammunition in their mouth. They don't come, a lot, most thieves don't come with firearms. People can come, the ones that Jesus Christ was talking about here, they can come to talk you into doing something wrong, to talk you into destroying your own self. So we have to watch out for temptations that comes from outside of us. And 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. First Peter five eight. First Peter five eight says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast." In faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So, we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. Because we have an adversary, Satan. A spirit. We cannot see him. We cannot talk to him. But he, he can come to us in different ways, in different forms. We have to be vigilant. And he is very smart. We have to be very careful. The Bible said we should be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he might devour. So he, um, Jesus Christ was betrayed by his own disciple, Judas. Satan entered into him and used him against his master. We have to be vigilant. We have to be very careful. Even when we are um, with each other, we have to watch very carefully. Because we are humans and sometimes we err. Sometimes the devil uses us. If we identify when Satan is using a brother or a sister, we can escape that temptation. So we have to be very careful. When Satan entered into Peter, and um, said something to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, get behind me, Satan. So we have to work very closely, whether we are sitting with the people in the world or people in the church. We have to watch so that we'll be able to help one another, you know, because we have an adversary, Satan, a strong man, but Jesus Christ is a stronger person, and the most powerful with God the Father. If you turn to 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, from verse 6, Um, I'll start from 4. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 6. It says, But you are brethren, but you brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us 
who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. So these, these words are for us. Let us not sleep. Let us watch and pray. Let us watch and pray. Let us not get too comfortable. Let us watch and pray always. Let the, start, the, the watch start from us, from inside of us. Then we take it outside. And make sure we don't enter into temptation that we generated for our own selves. And make sure the devil does not dig a hole for us and we fall into it. If you turn to First Chronicles chapter twenty-one, First Chronicles twenty-one from verse one. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know. And Joab answered, The Lord made his people an hundred times so many more as they may be, as they be. But my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servant? Why then doth my lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Because Satan has risen up against Israel and the king. This is temptation. This is trial that Satan brought upon David and the house of Israel. And he made David to number Israel, to count his people. He wants to know how many they are. So we have temptations and trials that come from within us, and we have others that come from Satan. It's not that whichever way Jesus Christ said to his disciples, watch and pray. If we can watch and pray, we will overcome every temptation and trial no matter the source. If we can watch and pray, we will have that peace that surpasses all understanding. But if we are careless about our lives, if we don't watch, if we don't pay attention to what we are doing, where we are heading to, what we are thinking, and how that will translate into action and the consequences of it, then that peace will depart from us. But for us to have that peace that surpasses all understanding, we must heed to the master's instruction. And the master says, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. This is very important. If you turn to Genesis 39, 7. Genesis 39. The story of Joseph and his master's wife. This, this is a temptation that is coming from somewhere else. Genesis 39, 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what not, what it with me in the house? And he hath committed all things, all that he had, to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin 
against God. So Joseph was on the watch. He was so vigilant. And he said, no, this is evil. If we are not vigilant enough, we might not be able to know when evil is coming on our way, when we are about to perform wickedness. Joseph was on the watch and he was able to escape this. Even though the whole thing here got him into trouble, but in the end, God blessed him. So we have to watch always. We have to watch always, especially now that we are going closer to Passover, that we are trying to remove all the leavings in our hearts, all the wrongdoings, that we are trying to prepare ourselves to receive the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. To renew that commitment, we have to watch very closely. And we have to pray, we have to be vigilant. If you turn to First Peter 4.7, First Peter four seven. First Peter four seven. And it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. We have to be sober and we have to watch with everything that is going on in the world today. All the wickedness and evil that we can see even in our own neighborhood. We have to, we need to understand that the return of Jesus Christ is at hand. And we need to watch we need to be sober and we need to pray and look at what Jesus Christ said to his disciples when he was teaching them how to pray in Matthew 16 13 Matthew 16 13 Matthew 6, sorry, Matthew 6, 13. They call this place the Lost Prayer. But this is not, um, you know, we have the Lost Prayer in John 17. But Jesus Christ taught them how to pray here. And look at what he said in Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So we also have to pray and ask God not to lead us into temptation, but to deliver us from all evil. So we don't have to watch alone. We have to watch and we have to pray. Because Jesus Christ said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need strength to overcome. We need strength to walk in the right path. We need strength to do the right thing. And that strength, we can draw that strength from God when we pray and communicate to Him. And we ask Him to help us, to lead us not into temptation, and to use His mighty hand to deliver us from all evil and from those that are stronger than we are. So prayer is very important because God is the one that will order our steps. He is the one that will deliver us from all evil. The book of Psalms 145, 18. Psalms 145, 18.
The Bible assures us in the book of Psalms 145, 18. He said, The Lord is near unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. So if we kneel down and call upon God, the Bible said, God is near unto us. God is right here. He's very near to hear our prayers. So if God is near, and he has the solution to all our problems. He has the solution to all the things that bother us and all the troubles that we face. Why don't we always call upon him in prayers? Why don't we always call upon him in prayers? The Bible assures us that if we ask anything in the name of Jesus Christ, according to his will, that God will give it to us. This is a great privilege. This is a great privilege. This privilege, not everybody in the whole world have this privilege. The Bible says in the book of Peter, I think 1 Peter or 2 Peter, I'm not sure again, but it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So God has chosen us, and God has made these promises to us, that any time we call upon him, that he is very near to answer us. And if we pray according to his will, that he is ready and willing to hand it to us whatsoever our request is. Watch and pray, brethren. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. If you turn to 1 John 5, 14. 1 John 5, 14. First John five fourteen, and it says, "And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us; and if we know that He heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of Him." So when Jesus Christ asks us to pray, Jesus Christ is saying. And if we pray, God will give it to us. God will answer us. And this is the confidence that we have. This is the reason why we go to God in prayers. Because we know that God can do all things. And that God is willing to help us anytime we call upon Him. Jesus Christ said to His disciples, Watch and pray. Watch and pray. This is what we need today in a world that is in crisis we need to watch and we need to pray and that is how we will be at peace that is how we we'll have that peace that surpasses all understanding people around you will not know how that peace comes but you know because you are at peace with god and you always go to him for help and you're always watching not to enter into temptation. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13 1 Peter 1 Peter 1.13 Wherefore, guard up your lines of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you and the revelation of Jesus Christ. And if you turn to Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 42. This, this, this is the conclusion of it all. Matthew 24, 42. Jesus Christ said, Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you know not 
what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord have made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to smit his fellow servant, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looked not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion, which with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Therefore, brethren, let's watch and pray. Let's watch and pray. First of all, we need to watch so that we will not enter into temptation from within us. Temptation that comes from our own heart, our own desire, our own conversation, our own actions, our own way of life. Then we need to watch for temptations that devil throw at us, like what he did to the woman in Genesis chapter 1, what he did to David in the book of Chronicles. And we know the Bible described him as a thief. He comes to steal and to destroy. But if we are sober, if we are vigilant, if we watch and pray, we will be at peace.